Hey everyone and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So in today's video I'm going to be talking through all the books that I read in September. So in September I was taking part in two readathons, Bookoplathon which is hosted by Becca from Becca and the Books and the Magical Readathon which is hosted by G at Book Roast. I think there are eight or nine books that I'm going to talk about in this wrap up but two of them were part of the same series so I'll obviously talk about them together. I am really really late with filming this wrap up because I wanted to try and finish all of the books on my TBR before I filmed it and I did finish the last book last night so obviously it has been a while since I've read some of these books so my thoughts might not be a hundred percent clear however I did do weekly reading vlogs throughout September so if you're interested in them then they are on my channel if you want my full thoughts on any of these books I will also have timestamps in the description so if there was a particular book that you're interested in then you can skip ahead at any point the first book that I read in September was The Heart Principle by Helen Huang so this is the third book in the Kiss Quotient series which is an adult romance series and I have really enjoyed this series so far I really loved the first book and the second book. I think I gave them both five stars or maybe I gave one of them four stars but it's one of my favourite adult romance series and I was really excited for this book and I did enjoy it. I gave it five stars however I feel like this book had a very different tone to the previous two books. The story follows a woman called Anna who at the start of the book her long-term boyfriend turns around to her and says that he wants to try an open relationship which Anna isn't really okay about. It's not what she wants however she's talking to her friends and they convince her to use it as an opportunity and to go out and have some casual relationships and just see what else is out there and that's when she meets Quan who's a side character from the first two books and he used to be a bit of a ladies man however over the last couple of years he's had some health issues which has really affected his confidence and his cousin convinces him to try dating again and see if that will help and so initially when these two characters meet they're not really looking for it to develop into anything however it's a romance and so you can probably guess what happens. <laughs> As I said though I did feel like this book had a very different tone to the previous two books because from around the halfway point I felt like the story started to deviate a little bit because it focused a lot on Anna's personal journey and because of that it meant that the romance started to take a bit of a back seat and it became more of a secondary plot and the focus was on Anna which I didn't mind however I feel like if you're going into this book expecting a light and funny fluffy romance then that is not what this book is. It was a lot heavier than I was expecting and it was quite difficult to read in places. I did read the author's note at the end of the book and from that I can gather that this was a very very personal book for the author to write and I felt that as I was reading it was really emotional in places. I actually cried several times throughout the book. Every emotion that the main character was feeling I could feel and so in that sense I did think that it was very very well written and I do think that this is going to be one of my favourite books of the year. However I would really recommend checking the trigger warnings beforehand because a large part of this book does focus on one of the characters caring for a loved one who's terminally ill and yeah it was very difficult to read in places. All of the books in this series do have autism representation which I can't personally speak on however I would recommend checking out Own Voices reviews. The second book I read in September was The Burning God by R.F. Kuang. So this is the third book in the Poppy War series which is a grimdark adult military fantasy series. There are a lot of trigger warnings for this series so I would recommend looking those up if you are thinking of reading this. However this series as a whole follows a main character called Rin and the first book or the first half of the first book you follow Rin as she attends this prestigious military academy which no one expected her to get into because she's a war orphan from the South of her country which is a lot poorer and so she has this prejudice against her. The rest of the series does start to deviate a lot and it is more about war and about military strategy which I really really enjoyed. I would say that that was probably the thing that I liked the most about this series. The magic system in this series is also really interesting because it's all to do with harnessing the power of the gods. With this final book in the series even though I did enjoy it as a whole there were certain parts of the plot which I felt were a little bit rushed and which didn't have the impact that I was expecting. Also there were a lot of new characters that were introduced that I never really cared about 
because I felt like they were just there to conveniently move the plot along. There were still a lot of very epic moments and I did enjoy the ending. So I gave this four stars overall. I think on reflection, it's probably more like a 3.5, but I enjoyed my time reading it. I would say that The Dragon Republic, the second book in the series, is still my favorite though. The next book I read was One by One by Ruth Ware. So this is a mystery thriller that follows a team of work colleagues who are on this corporate retreat in this remote ski chalet and on I think it's like the second or third day of their trip there's this avalanche and they end up being snowed in and it's this isolated murder mystery so they all start being killed off one by one. I buddy read this with Helen from Helen's Book Haven and it was actually a really fun book to buddy read because there's a lot that you can talk about and there's a lot that you can discuss in terms of theories on who the killer is. It's not the type of thriller that has a lot of twists and turns but I also didn't find it super predictable. I actually think that Helen worked out what was going on a lot quicker than I did. I also really enjoyed the tension towards the end. However, I did think that the last few chapters started to drag just a little bit and could have maybe been cut down. However, if you're looking for a mystery thriller that has that isolated setting, then I would recommend this one as long as you don't mind reading about unlikable characters because I hated all of the characters or most of the characters in this book. They're not the easiest to like. It reminded me a little bit of The Guest List and The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. However, I would say that I enjoyed this slightly more. The next book I read was another thriller and that was 56 Days by Catherine Ryan Howard. So this is a crime mystery thriller that's set in Ireland right at the start of the pandemic. So there's two timelines you learn in the first chapter that a decomposing body has been found in this apartment building and then the story flicks back to 56 days earlier where you follow this couple who meet right before lockdown is announced and they decide to live together throughout lockdown because they don't want to be separated. This is the first book that I've read that's set during the pandemic and it was a little bit unnerving at times especially in the beginning because I'm just not used to reading books that have those little details Details which really point out how much the world has changed because of the pandemic. I did really like the writing though and the way that certain themes were approached. I don't want to go into too much detail because of spoilers but I thought that the characters felt well developed. I gave this book four stars overall because my only criticism was that I felt like there were certain moments where I did have to suspend disbelief just a little bit and I do tend to prefer thrillers that are a little bit more realistic or where I can believe at least that they would actually happen is not the type of thriller that has a lot of action but if you enjoy a slow burn and the plot interests you and you're okay reading a book that's set during the pandemic then I would recommend this. The next book I read was The Final Revival of Opal and Nev by Dawny Walton. So this is a literary fiction novel or it might actually be classed as historical fiction because there's two timelines so one in the present day and then one in the 1970s sort of it's a really interesting book in the way that it's structured because it's essentially a book within a book. So the book follows a journalist who's writing a book about Opal and Nev who were this famous rock duo during the 1970s. One of the main themes within the book is that it looks at racism within the music industry and especially at that time because Opal is black and Nev is white and you do see the way that they were treated very differently. This book has been compared a lot to Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins read because it's told in this interview style format where you're following this fictional author as she's interviewing Opal and Nev and the people that were close to them. This was actually on my five star predictions list and I am happy to say that it was a five stars. I think if I'm being really really picky it was a 4.5 stars like a nine out of ten because the one criticism that I had was that throughout the book there are these author's notes that are written by the fictional author that's writing the book and I found out like those broke up the flow just a little bit however otherwise I would really recommend this especially if you like character driven books. The next two books I'm going to talk about are The Bitter Twins and The Poison Song by Jen Williams. So these are books two and three in the Winnowing Flame trilogy which has become one of my favourite adult fantasy series. I loved this series a lot more than I was expecting because I picked up the first book after seeing Elliot Brooks talk about it in a recommendations video and I didn't really 
know what to expect because I hadn't really heard many people talking about it. For anyone who doesn't know, this is an adult fantasy series which has a sci-fi twist. So it's set in this world where a few hundred years ago there was this war between the San and the Duralia who are these alien-like worm creatures. And as a result of this war, and there were also wars that happened before this that were called reigns, as a result of these wars the world has been poisoned. And you're following three main characters who are trying to uncover the mystery behind why certain things are happening in this world. I think what I loved most about this series was definitely the world building, but also the characters and how it's actually quite funny in places. I think that Jen Williams is a British author and as I was reading it, with the banter between the characters, it did feel like it had that British sense of humour, which I loved. I have been really, really positive about this series because I do really, really love it. However, the only thing I wanted to mention that I think might put a few people off is that there are a few horror elements throughout this series. And like, it's not a horror, like I wouldn't say that it is a horror, but there were a few moments that really made my skin crawl. And so that is just something that I wanted to mention in case that is something that you just do not like at all. But otherwise, if you're looking for an adult fantasy that has really unique world building and that has a lot of LGBTQ plus rep and that has really good character interactions, really good character developments, then I would really recommend this. The series actually that I would compare this to the closest is Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor, but not because of the writing style. So Lainey Taylor does have a very distinctive flowery writing style, which this series doesn't have. However, the way that the world is built up and the mystery and the way that certain things are revealed, it did give me similar vibes to Strange the Dreamer. The next book I read in September, which I technically finished in October, but I read most of it in September, so I'm gonna count it in this wrap up, but that is Assassin's Quest by Robin Hobb. This is the third book in the Farsia trilogy, which is part of the wider Realm of the Outling series. I really enjoyed the first book in the series. I gave it four stars. And then the second book I struggled with a little bit, but overall I enjoyed it and I really liked the ending so I gave it three stars. However this book I really really struggled with and I couldn't decide on a rating because it came out as a three stars in Core Pile. I think because I do like the characters in this series and I do appreciate Robin Hobb's writing and there are certain parts that I do enjoy but overall I didn't enjoy this book and I think I just need to accept that this particular trilogy wasn't for me. I would still recommend the audiobooks for this series though if you are thinking of giving it a go because I did really like the narration on the audiobooks and I felt like it did match the general tone and the general atmosphere of the world. I really liked the world building in this series. I don't know if I've mentioned that already actually but I also really liked the magic systems. I thought they were really really interesting. So there's two magic systems. One's to do with having the ability to bond with animals and then there's another magic system that's more to do with mind communication. There's a lot more to it than that and I think that the way that Robin Hobb builds up the magic systems gradually over the course of the books I thought that that was done really really well. I've been trying to work out what it was about this series that didn't quite click with me and I think the main issue that I had was by the time I got to the third book I didn't really care about Fitz anymore which is a pretty big problem because Fitz is the main character and the books are told from his perspective. It's written in this style where he is telling the story of his life but I just stopped caring about his thoughts and what was going on in his head and just all of the drama and I actually found that I was a lot more interested in the side characters and they weren't in the third book enough for it to hold my attention and so I ended up feeling just a little bit bored and so I am really good that I didn't like this third book especially because I did really like the first book but I wouldn't want my review to put anyone off from reading this because I do know that so many people love this series and I do still have really high hopes for the next trilogy in this series. The final book that was on my September TBR that I did quickly want to mention even though I technically finished it a week into October but it was on my TBR for September and that was The Well of Ascension by Brandon Sanderson. This is the second book in the Mistborn series and I am actually currently making a spoiler filled reading vlog 
for both this and the Hero of Ages, which should be live, I guess, next week. I guess it all depends actually on when I actually finish the Hero of Ages because it took me 10 days to read this book, not because I wasn't enjoying it, but because I didn't want it to end. <laughs> and so I wanted to take my time with it. But yeah, my spoiler filled reading vlog will have all of my spoiler filled thoughts, obviously. In terms of my spoiler free thoughts, I loved this. I gave it five stars. I think that if you're looking to get into adult fantasy, then this series would be a really good place to start. I put off reading it for a really long time because I was expecting it to be quite dense and difficult to read. And it's really, really not. I love the world building in this series and the magic system and the way that, especially in this book, there were so many times where I was trying to work out what was going on and I was trying to make predictions about certain things. And yeah, how I thought that things would end and the ending to this took me completely by surprise. I was not expecting that. Five stars, would definitely recommend it. But yeah, that does bring me to the end of the video. So thanks for watching. If you've made it this far, let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and what you thought of them. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and click subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you next time. Bye. <laughs>